This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. Hey guys, it's Max. We just got in the brand new iPhone 12 and today I'm gonna be comparing it against the iPhone 11. And I'm not only gonna cover the typical things such as the design and performance, but also things like the display quality. We're gonna cover things like 5G speed compared to 4G and also speakers and much more. Let's go ahead and get this thing open. And I have to say that I'm excited for this blue color. Now, to be honest, I am not a fan of blue. I love red, but the red just doesn't look good this year. But this blue looks fantastic. I love how deep and rich it is. And I love that the sides here are darker. Uh, I guess maybe I'm a fan of blue now. Now in the box, we do not have ear pods or a charging adapter. Last year we had one, but it was a five watt super slow one. So you probably wanted to upgrade anyway. This year, Apple makes you buy it, but we actually have a better alternative. This Anchor one costs less than Apple's and it is about half the size. So I'll go ahead and link it down in the video description below. And on that topic, let's touch on MagSafe. We have magnets built into the new iPhone 12 and you have different accessories such as cases. There's gonna be different mounts. And a big one is this new MagSafe charger that can fast wirelessly charge up to 50 15 watts compared to the iPhone 11 and other iPhones that are older that do maximum of 7.5 watts. Now we are doing a dedicated charging shootout between MagSafe and regular charging and other wireless charging. So if you wanna see how fast the new MagSafe charger is, make sure you subscribe so you guys don't miss out on that video. Getting back to the design, I have to say that this color looks awesome. And it's interesting how much different the new phone feels in your hand. Obviously we have these squared off edges instead of it being round, but it definitely feels smaller and lighter as well. And I've been using the iPhone 12 Pro for the last about 24 hours. I've waited to unbox this one it feels dramatically lighter than the Pro. Let's go ahead and stack these, and it's interesting how much smaller the 12 is, despite the screen being the same. You probably can't even see it right now. Keep in mind, the displays are the same 6.1 inches, but the 12 is shorter and narrower. Because of that, the 12 is definitely more comfortable in the hand. It definitely feels smaller and lighter. To be honest, I thought this new square design isn't gonna be as comfortable in the hand compared to this nice rounded frame of the 11, but it does actually feel more comfortable in the hand, it's easier to hold, especially if you put your finger underneath like I do when you're touching stuff and typing. The power and volume buttons are actually lower on the phone and not just because the phone is shorter, but interestingly, Apple actually designed them to be lower from the top. The camera bump is larger to accompany that larger lens that lets in more light. And with that, we actually have a larger flash as well. And the microphone stayed the same, whereas on the Pro models, they actually made the microphone smaller. And lastly, this new iPhone 12 is actually quite a bit thinner than the iPhone 11, even though it's hard to tell in your hands because of the squared off design. And even on camera, it's hard to show that off because of how the glass is actually bent and goes up. Let's take a look at the fronts and wow, that is a massive difference in bezel size. Now the 12 actually has has a thinner bezel than even the 11 Pro, whereas the 11 standard one had a thick bezel. You guys can see the difference right there. The 12 seems much more modern because this display is completely flat instead of being curved and it meets up really nicely with the frame and that should actually give you a little bit more durability. And with that, the 12 actually has new ceramic shield glass, which Apple says is four times stronger. Now, before we go in depth in comparing these displays, and there is a ton ton of differences. Let me give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making your own website, Squarespace is seriously the best way to go. We've built multiple websites and you can too with literally no web making experience. You just choose a template, customize blocks of text and images, and easily move them around. It's incredibly simple, affordable, and ours have been running flawlessly for years now, bringing in new clients thanks to its built-in SEO tools. So whether you're making a website for a small business or for literally anything else, go to squarespace.com slash maxtech for a free no credit card required trial. And when you're ready to launch, save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Comparing the displays, I can instantly see a difference. The upgrade is massive. Apple got a lot of flack when they released the iPhone 10R and the 11 has the same exact display because it was just slightly higher than 720p and it was a LCD screen where most of the competition are making OLEDs or at least 1080p screens. Well, 
finally, Apple has updated that and the 12 display looks gorgeous. We have a difference of about double the pixels. We have almost 1.5 million pixels, slightly less, compared to 3 million pixels. So yes, I could tell that this display is sharper. Another difference is how much warmer the new 12 is. Both do have True Tone turned on, and the 11 seems kind of like it's bluish compared to this warmer color. I'm also noticing a difference in viewing angle. The iPhone 11, as soon as I twist it, it gets much darker, it also gets more blue, and I see a good amount of reflections, whereas this newer one has less reflections and the brightness and colors stay very similar. Comparing the maximum brightness, let me max this out here, and they look very similar as they should because Apple's saying they're both at about 625 nits typical. But because the iPhone 12 has an OLED screen, it actually has a peak brightness of 1200 nits, meaning that outside it could actually get brighter to help combat the sun. That will also help when you're watching videos, especially for HDR. And here comparing both of these, I exposed for the displays and max them out, the 12 definitely looks more vibrant and the colors look richer and better and the blacks are deeper as well because it's an OLED panel. Now, interestingly, right now, YouTube is not giving me an HDR option on the 12. They might need to update their app for that, but I am getting the option for 4K60 instead of just 1080p. So clearly the display on the 12 is much better in every single way. Now, what about the speakers? Well, we're gonna compare those. Go ahead and put on your best pair of headphones and let's take a listen. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Now to me, I can tell a difference. The 12 is better in pretty much every way. Now Apple didn't say it was better, but I definitely can hear that the highs are a little bit more crisp, the mids are a little bit more full, and we are getting a little bit more bass as well. Let's get into performance and let's start by talking about 5G. Apple is making a massive push here. And in my last comparison, I tested the 12 Pro against the 11 Pro and both of these actually have the same exact modems and I saw a massive difference, not only between 5G against 4G, but the 4G that comes with the iPhone 12 is so much faster than the 4G LTE on the 11. That's because these new iPhones are using Qualcomm modems, the be very best on the market compared to the older iPhones iPhones which use Intel that are much, much slower. I'm glad that Apple isn't cheaping out on their lower priced model like a lot of Android companies do. They're putting the very best chips, including the A14, in this iPhone 12. And we're actually doing a comparison of 5G versus 4G all across my city at different times. So if you guys wanna see a detailed test with reception and speeds and streaming, make sure you guys click that subscribe button. Now let's compare the CPU and graphics performance. I'm gonna go ahead and start Geekbench 5. And the iPhone 11 is no slouch. It has an A13 in it. That is faster than even the very best Android phones. But with this new iPhone 12, we have the A14 processor. That is the first five nanometer chip on the market, which means that not only is it more powerful, but it's more power efficient as well, which is good when it comes time to talk about battery life here in just a sec. All right, we have our results, and I was honestly expecting a little bit more from the iPhone 12. Now we're still getting about a 20% improvement in single core and a little bit more than that uh, in multi-core, so it's still a great update, but comparing it to the iPhone 12 Pro, I actually got 4,200 with that one. Now that might might be because the 12 Pro has six gigs of RAM, both the 11 and 12 have four gigs of RAM, but we'll see if this actually matters in the real world. I will be doing a comparison between the 12 and 12 Pro after about a week of real world use. So subscribe if you guys wanna check out that video. Now let's go ahead and test out the graphics performance. And the results are in and man, this is actually where their improvement is. We have 6,400 compared to 9,258. So that's about a 50% improvement in graphics and most new apps are using Metal now for acceleration. Of course, for gaming, that's gonna be a big difference. So that is good to see a, such a nice upgrade. And with that, let's talk about battery life. Now, obviously, I have not had time to test it. I just unboxed this in front of you. But Mr. Who's the Boss did an excellent shootout between
between a bunch of iPhones and the results are really good news. Now, not only did we get more power and a much nicer, sharper, brighter display, but the iPhone 12 actually outlasted the 11 by over an hour and a half. And if you have an iPhone 10R, it actually outlasted it by two hours and 10 minutes. And that is awesome. So that is a really, really good improvement. Now, weirdly enough, if you have an iPhone 11 Pro, the 5.8 inch model, the battery life actually got worse. But for everybody else from the 11, 10R, or the older iPhones, the battery life is gonna be a nice improvement. And now let's talk about the cameras, and they really haven't changed that much. The ultra-wide camera is the same, the front-facing camera is the same, and the main shooter actually has the same sensor, or as far as we know, but it lets in a little bit more light with the F1.6 aperture compared to F1.8. Now, most of the updates are actually coming from the software. We have Smart HDR3, and we have night mode on all cameras. So here you guys can see the, some comparison shots compared to the iPhone 11 or the 11 Pro. So there are some nice upgrades. And not only do we have these massive improvements in poor lighting, but in decent lighting, diffusion is actually better now as well, which gives us more detail. We'll be doing a detailed camera comparison next week, not only between the 12 and 11, but we're also gonna toss in the iPhone 10R. So that's gonna be a great video. And finally, let's finish off with the prices and my final verdict. Now the iPhone 11, unlike the 11 Pro, is still being sold. When it came out, it was $700, but now you can pick one up for $599, so $600. Bucks. And the iPhone 12, instead of keeping that same $699, it actually costs $799, so $800. Bucks. And if you want to buy the unlocked version, you have to pay $30 more. So that is really unfortunate. And now we're looking at a price difference of $200, which is a good amount. Now, of course, the 12 does have a much, much nicer display. We have the new or processors, we have better cameras, and along with that, you have MagSafe and the new 5G modems and much better 4G LTE as well. So there's a lot of improvements, but there is that $200 price gap. Now, personally, for me, I would still go for the iPhone 12 because you are future-proofing yourself. We have the new design, we have that 5G built in, so if you're gonna keep your phone for two, three, maybe even four or five years like some people do, I think it's worth getting it for that 5G. G chip and the new designs. Now, if you know you're gonna keep it for a year or two, you're short on cash, $600 is still a really good deal for your phone. It's still gonna do an awesome job, even though it's not as new and modern. But go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. You guys can click that circle above. We have a lot of new videos coming out on both of these phones. We have real world comparisons, photo comparisons, all sorts of great videos. And if you wanna watch a great video right now, we have a couple right over there. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.